everyone, welcome back to the Half Soybean channel. My name is Sharon and today we are going to be making Minji Kim's ruffled panelled silk twill mini dress in the colour emerald green. I don't know if that's the actual name that Minji gave this dress but it's the one that I found on the website that carried her winning collection. If you don't know too much about who Minji Kim is, she was the winner of the fashion designing competition called Next in Fashion on Netflix and her final 10 piece collection was inspired by Frida Kahlo and it was just so beautiful, colourful, whimsical. I absolutely fell in love with it. And one of the dresses that really stuck out to me was this green one, probably because I love green so much myself and I thought it would be really, really fun to try and make it today. I was able to pick up a similar shade of green, but the fabric itself is obviously nothing close to the one that Minju has used. She uses a thick silk twill and I just picked up some satin dance fabric from the store and I was looking at the range of lace and appliques at the store and nothing quite compared so I ended up just picking up this cotton fabric with some nice flowery designs on it. The original neck white panel is apparently some tulle laid with the flower applique on it. Gonna use some plain cotton fabric for the inside and the dress also has pockets. I'm usually very lazy and I don't like adding pockets even though they are extremely useful. I'm just lazy. Right off the bat I'm just not entirely sure how I'm going to attach the front neck panel but the overall silhouette of the dress doesn't seem too complicated. I'm actually going to pattern hack a free pattern that you guys can print at home today. I've actually used it before when I was making um, my Christmas presents this year and it's a basic tunic pattern. I don't know if it comes with instructions, I just couldn't find them, which is fine. I'm just gonna use the pattern and then, I don't know, come up with my own way of assembling it. There are some things I wanna say about this pattern because I've had experience with using it and apparently this is sizes 8 to 16, but personally I feel like I don't really think it's a true 16 at all. Minju's dress doesn't have any darts from what I can see, so I'm actually going to ignore this dart section and sort of just like curve out this area and I'm also going to be using the largest size of the pattern so this is size 16 and it's the outermost dotted edge. What we also need to alter is this neckline I recall from when I made it last time it's actually quite a curved boat neck style and Minju's dress has quite a high neck over here so we're going to have to alter that and we're also going to have have to alter the width of the shoulder seam as well. It does seem quite wide from your neck to the edge of the shoulder on Minju's dress. I'm just quickly gonna measure my shoulder length from my neck to the tip, the tip, the end of my shoulder. And I think I'm getting maybe about 14 to 15 centimeters. And that's how much I'm going to make my final shoulder right now. If you have a look right now, the current shoulder length is only about seven centimeters. So what I wanna do is probably let a centimeter come in on this side and then extend the neck length all the way to about 15 centimeters here. I'll just connect the line. And then I also want the curve of the neckline to be not that deep. So I'm just going to draw a very shallow curve. Then you sort of just want to cut out the pieces. I finally got a rotary cutter and you know, I don't know if I love it honestly. I sort of think I like scissors better. But anyway, I just did the neck part by putting it up against myself. Okay, this is now the back portion of the dress. I've put the pattern down on the fabric and I'm just gonna use the front side of the dress just to make sure that the shoulder lines are going to match up. So I'm just gonna draw a line from here to here. And I also wanna bring up the back neckline a little bit so that we are sitting around here. And with the back, I'm only going to cut up to the waist length because the back has that large ruffled panel. So I'm going to cut right here. 
based on the waist to bottom hem height, I also cut out some rectangular pieces to make the ruffles. Got these two rectangles now for the bottom ruffle hem of the back dress. Um, I will adjust as I go depending on how much gathers I want. But for now, I've got two rectangular pieces that are the height of the waist length, the thigh length, and they are both 44 inches or 112 centimeters wide. Then I used my green pattern pieces just to copy and cut it out in the lining fabric as well. I also cut out four pocket pieces in the green fabric and a basic square slash rectangle piece for the front bib. I'm going to overlock the back straight edge of the dress. So this is where the zipper is going to go later. So I'm going to do that for the lining and also the fashion fabric side, which is green. I think I have to somehow attach um, the white piece, like the little bib area to the front neckline. Question is, how do I sort this out. Um, I've got my reference photo right here. Um, okay, I'm gonna start by folding this back in half. I'm gonna put a weight down, then I'm also going to fold this in half and place it on here. Sketch where I actually want the white part. So it comes down a bit like a trapezium, um, down to about the armpit line. So that's where I'll end mine as well. And then I'm going to do the very scary thing and cut this out. Then I'm gonna come back to this fella. I'm gonna trace the green part right at the edge on the neckline and the shoulder line, but I'm gonna give about a centimeter of seam allowance for this curved part so I am able to sew on to the green part of the dress. What I am going to do to attach this is I'm going to start by flipping right sides to right sides and I'm going to pin along this edge like so and then eventually I'll be sewing like this around the curve and then we'll put slits into the seam so it curves nicer around the edges. So really just take your time to maneuver the fabric so you can get nicely around the corners and once you get to one corner leave the needle in and turn it around to get to the other side. I struggled a little bit with this and once I got um, around one corner I started again from the other end and went around the second corner. Then you just sort of want to snip in the corner to the seam so that it's all a bit more flexible in the corners and it doesn't look super bumpy from the outside. Then I gave it a quick press on a very low heat setting so you don't melt the satin. It is by no means perfect but I did try my best and it was my first time trying anything like this. If you have any better suggestions on how I should have gone about doing this, let me know in the comments please. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the shoulder seams together for the green fabric and also the lining fabric. Then I put basting stitches in my rectangles from before so that we can gather them to attach it to the back of the dress. Now that I have gathered my bottom skirt piece, I'm going to attach it to the bottom of the back panel and I'm simply just going to pin into place and sew. Right, so here's a quick update on the dress. It's just sitting on the mannequin. I feel like I've attached the ruffles maybe a tad too low. I feel like it should be slightly um, higher, like maybe here, but it's fine. It's not like I had any extra fabric left anyway, and I sort of like the drop hem look. I don't think it's too much of an issue. I've just laid the outer dress and the lining right sides together, and I have pinned around the neck hole, and I'm just going to sew down that first. 
Once the neckline has been done, I'm just going to go ahead and sew along the armholes as well on both sides. Just pin them together right here. I am now going to understitch the lining so that it looks a bit more crisp from the outside. So I gave the neckline and the armholes a quick press so it's nice and flat now. And now what I'm going to do is attach the pockets. To the green side I have attached the pocket right sides together facing inward. So along this edge down and so I've done this four times. I've done this to the back of the dress and then the same thing on the other side. So facing inwards. Um, we can see the armpit corners here and I'm gonna pin these two together and basically what we have to do is sew a straight line from down the bottom of the lining all the way to the top around the pockets and to the other end of the green dress and that should finish up the sides of our dress. Starting on whichever end, so this is the bottom corner of the green side of the dress and you just sew from one end here, so I'm um, sewing around the pocket and finishing at the lining bottom corner of the dress. It might look a little bit complicated, but it's actually super easy to sew the sides. And this method makes it look super clean around the armholes. Then I put in an invisible zip starting from the green side and then also attaching it from the lining side as well. Then I simply hemmed the bottom edge of the dress and we are done. Before I show you what the final dress looks like, I just wanted to say I think all the other seams look fine and they look um, really flat and nice but the seams on the zipper are puckering a little bit like this and I really don't like the way it looks and <laughs> I don't know, it's a little bit embarrassing but I, I just don't know what the problem is. Maybe it's because I didn't cut the fabric on its bias or I didn't use a thin enough needle, but I'm just gonna leave it for this final look. But um, if I find how to fix this, I'm gonna go back and fix this puckering issue. And here is the final look. Okay, what do we think? I personally feel like we've got the basic gist of the design here, but the fabric weight just wasn't right. But still overall, I reckon pretty good effort and it's a fun and fresh color. Ew, I really didn't want to show the back, but um, I mean, there's no real point in hiding it, so here it is. It was actually really quite stressful for me to work with this satin, but you know, I pushed myself to finish it, and now I'm just at peace with this project. Other than that, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you very soon in the next video.